as far as I know, there's no company in the world who concurrently manufactures seven types of slitters. We did not expect a lot of business and we were, we were very worried as to where we are headed. But uh, we started getting orders and then they didn't stop. But all these orders were from India and not, uh, not from overseas. Time you had capacity and uh, with the way the packaging industry is growing. So you, what, what was uh, okay for you yesterday may not be today because of the category of customers you are supplying to and also the substrates you are slitting. It does appear that we, we have 30 to 35% of the market share of our addressable market. Europe, typically the European machine manufacturers, uh, the delta in the technology has been becoming smaller and smaller and there is not uh, much of a difference today. However, the gap in the prices continues or maybe even increases because uh, we are always at the uh, you know receiving end of the foreign exchange rate and machines keep getting more and more expensive. And uh, as far as China goes, I, I do not, I have not been following them. They're, they're simply not there in the picture for us because uh, I, I, I have heard of... Uh, some of our customers having tried out Chinese machines, but then they're like horror stories. So I don't think I need to say anything more here. However, uh, we we do consider our customer, and by customer, let me be very blunt, we do consider the operator of the machine as our biggest consultant. So when it comes to turret machines, the difference is even more. The, the machines which come in from Europe are priced about 70% higher than what our prices are. We love to spoil our customers. Uh, I see this trend to continue certainly for the next two or three years because the most conservative of customers have ordered machines with us in the past six months. Established in 1985, SP Ultraflex Systems manufactures rotogravure, lamination, and slitting machines for flexible packaging. Started exporting to UAE in 92 and supplied the first rotogravure press in 94 and the first solventless laminator in 98. In 2005, shifted the focus to the manufacture of slitting rewinding machines to the exclusion of rotogravure and lamination machines gave the country its first dual torrent slitter rewinder in 2014. Exports comprises about 40% of their annual turnover, having installations with more than 20 countries overseas. Joining us on the show, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Biku Kohli, Managing Director as SP Ultraflex Systems. Very warm welcome to the show, Insights with Nidhi Varma, Biku Ji. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Uh, Biku, you are the third generation. What was the family's original business before we got into this uh, machine making? And how did this thought come to open up a machine ma manufacturing facility? That was a long time ago, but uh, let me tell you whatever I know of it. My grandfather, along with his brothers, migrated from Pakistan and uh, started a grocery business in India, continuing what they were doing across the border. And uh, he then quit the family business and started uh, making uh, machines. I believe uh, we started with paper bag making machines, wax coating machines, sh uh, sheet cutting machines, and then gradually moved on to rotogravure machines. Looking back, I, I wonder what made my grandfather uh, switch uh, so drastically. And uh, what I can uh, think of is the fact that uh, he was a very intelligent person and uh, it was his thirst uh, or, uh, you know, his desire to do something intellectually stimulating that led him to take this decision. And uh, that's how we are all in the business. And then one by one, my uncles and my father, we, we there were four of them, uh, started joining the business and uh, with slight differentiation, of course. And then the third generation followed suit. So here I am. 
Excellent. Thank you for sharing that journey. Uh, very different from uh, what we would have thought, but we are very glad that your forefathers did take this decision. Yeah. Uh, Biko, you have a wide range of seven different types of slitters and rewinders. Some of the innovations may include robo-slit and reversible rewinding. Can you tell our viewers in brief, what is the uniqueness in your slitters and rewinders and what of solutions that you provide to the market? Sure. I... I would like to divide my answer into two parts. One is the why. Why do we have the widest range in the world? When you say seven slitters, uh, as far as I know, there's no company in the world who concurrently manufactures seven types of slitters. And uh, now the why is because our intention is to provide to the customers proven and tested models for every conceivable need they have. And uh, you, we, we call it standardization through customization. So we have standard models for custom solutions. Now, I, I'll just give you the background behind how we've done this uh, categorization. It is not superficial. It is very thoughtful, and there's a lot of thought behind it. Our machines are broadly divided into two categories, duplex rewinders and dual turret rewinders. So without getting into what duplex and dual turret are, because I believe widely our audience would be knowing what we're talking about. Now, within each of these broad categories, we have different layouts. We have a compact layout and we have a layout in which the unwind, which is the input of the machine, and the cutting section and the rewind section, which is the process part of the machine, are separated. And we have two models uh, differing in the manner in which we separate the two sections of the machine. So we have three layouts within each category, which results in six models. And of course, we have a seventh model, which is uh, uh, a dream model, I would say, an, an operator's delight, where we have uh, everything, the unwind, rewind on one side, leaving the cutting section to be accessed freely by the operator. So uh, this is how we have uh, seven models. And like I told you, between them, we are able to address the wildest of uh, uh, the requirements of the customers. Excellent. So it's a complete end-to-end -end solution, and your array is full of all options that the customers may ever want. Um, Biko, you supply your slitters to the Middle East and Africa also. Uh, has the percentage of exports in your total revenue, understand it was 40%, uh, has it increased in the pandemic? Yeah. As I look back into the first couple of months of the pandemic, we we did not expect a lot of business and we were, we were very worried as to where we are headed. But uh, we started getting orders and then they didn't stop. But all these orders were from India and not uh, not from overseas. Uh, that's how it started. So, in fact, our percentage dropped for the first few months. But in the last two or three months, we started getting orders from overseas. And uh, as of now, I believe we are back to where we normally are year on year. 40% of our sales are in overseas markets. Oh, that's a very optimistic uh, note that you're back on your... Uh... You're on your number. Um, Biko, the slitters are basically required by the flexible packaging companies making laminates and uh, uh, other uh, uh, films. When they install the printing machines, <clears throat> do the machinery suppliers supply slitters or uh, they come to you or companies who are only providing slitters? How does it work? Uh, I'll take you back to uh, your introduction where you mentioned a little bit about our history, the fact that we used to make printing and lamination machines. So we are we were exactly where uh, some of the companies are today. And uh, I have seen companies who replicated our success stories by taking similar decision and focusing on their core strength. And in fact, uh, these companies who used to make slitters earlier they discontinued making slitters or continue to make very basic versions of slitters and recommend SP for better machines, more automatic machines, high speed machines, machines to address very, very typical requirements. They do recommend SP. Having said that, uh, there are some suppliers, some manufacturers who continue to manufacture the entire basket and uh, uh, get into package deals. So yes, we, we have both types and uh, both philosophies uh, concurrently with each other. Good. Um, <clears throat> are there any repeat purchases in slitters and rewinders? Oh, absolutely. Because uh, number one, uh, you keep needing slitters every time you add capacity and uh, with the way the packaging industry is growing, the 
our reputed customers are expanding uh, on an average i would say once in two years so we can look at uh, a customer buying a machine today coming back to us in a couple of years not only that uh, the older machines are often replaced by newer machines especially i'm talking about older machines of other makes because as uh, the substrates get thinner and thinner and more delicate you need better and better machines to handle them so you what what was uh, okay for you yesterday may not be today because of the category of customers you are supplying to and also the substrates you are slitting and of course we are all looking to become more efficient and expand grow without adding uh, turnover i mean uh, manpower so looking at all these things people are replacing older machines and buying new machines so between the two types we we get 50% of our business from repeat orders oh that's quite a quite a high volume uh, for the revenue part uh, biko what kind of competition are you facing in india how many similar slitter producers are there in india and what is your market share currently uh this this takes me to our uh, to our mission statement which is to present to the converting industry an optimum blend of reliability and affordability empowering them to get the best value from their investment so we pride ourselves on being exactly there where you get the best value for your money and uh, yes it does become a challenge for our sales team and it does become a challenge for them to sell machines because our machines are priced significantly higher than our nearest competitor i would say to the extent of 20 to 25% but uh, as i tell my people all you have to do is to prove to your customer that the 25% more you are paying is going to come back to you within so many months and the moment you do that your job is done oh that's a good sales pitch and uh, what is the percentage uh, your market share in india so we do not have uh, very organized data as you are aware of our industry especially when it comes to slitters but from whatever uh, we have you know superficial study we have done it does appear that we we have 30 to 35% of the market share of our addressable market understood what is the delta requirement per annum new per slitter annum, yes i i have uh, an answer for you there uh, again i'm talking about uh, the target customers we we would like to uh, we would like to approach i my guess would be about 100 uh, machines a year and you are giving 35 out of them oh, excellent there yes. uh, is there competition in india for slitters for from machinery manufacturers from outside india also maybe from europe or even from china uh, okay let's take europe uh, for starters now europe typically the european machine manufacturers Uh, the delta in the technology has been becoming smaller and smaller and there is not uh, much of a difference today in terms of performance when when you buy a machine from us or you buy a machine from the leading suppliers in europe one of the reasons here is the fact that we have common vendors for the critical components and the performance of the machine depends on how you where you source these critical parts from and of course a part which is often missed is how you integrate it with your machine so it's not simply about picking up something from somewhere and putting it on your machine it's also about integrating it with the other components of your machine and ensuring that it everything runs in harmony and gives you the desired output so yeah coming back to your question as i said the gap in terms of technology is barely visible or perceptible to today however the gap in the prices continues or maybe even increases because uh, we are always at the uh, you know receiving end of the foreign exchange rate and machines keep getting more and more expensive and uh, yeah yeah that's i think that's uh, about europe and uh, as far as china goes i i do not i have not been following them they're, they're simply not there in the picture for us because uh, i i i have heard of uh, some of our customers having tried out chinese machines but then they are like horror stories so i don't think i need to say anything more here you know you said it enough and if you are not even thinking about it i think that's a huge uh, statement um biko um, how do you manage the technological developments and upgradations do you do it indigenously or do you have a technical tie up with some uh, 
foreign uh, partner or supplier? Uh, we do not have any sort of tie-up, formal or informal. However, uh, we we do consider our customer, and by customer, let me be very blunt, we do consider the operator of the machine as our biggest consultant. And we have no fees to pay to him. We don't have to pay anything to him. We just have to lend him a patient ear, and he will keep on coming to you with recommendations. And all you have to do is to take them to your design department, be it your sales team or your service team, who are exposed to these people, to your customers, to the users of the machine, get in the information, get in the requests, and then get after the design and have them implemented. Wonderful. I think you've given us a golden uh, learning there for myself also, that you go to the person who's actually operating your machine. Absolutely. It's, it's the operator who's buying your machine at the end of the day. It's not the CEO sitting on top. It's the operator who's buying the machine. Um, coming back to uh, my earlier question, how do the European uh, machines, the slitters, compare on the price front with the SP? Uh, they are priced on an average, if you ask me, between 20 to 30% more than our equivalent or comparable configuration. However, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Let me add here that when we are asked for more automation levels, we are able to implement that additional level of automation at a much lower price than the European counterparts. Wonderful. So that's a huge price difference. And for such a price sensitive market uh, like India, everyone says that all the foreign uh, machinery manufacturers always make a comment that India is a very price sensitive market. So like, like is... when you talk about turret machines, turret machines are more advanced machines. And uh, as you may be aware, we've been making them for the last six years. Yes. And the next company to get into turret machines got into it about six months ago. So we had a head start of more than five years in which time we've supplied 30 machines. We're supplying another 10 machines this year. So when it comes to turret machines, the difference is even more. The, the machines which come in from Europe are priced about 70% higher than what our prices are. So you're leaving with the, the converters with no option. You've got the quality as well as we, for the price we to, on your side. We love to spoil our customers. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Biko, any challenges faced in the machine installations uh, in the pandemic uh, or the servicing part? Yeah, I'm glad that our service team uh, anticipated this and took some measures uh, or rather expedited what was already on the way. Uh, we were looking at uh, supporting our customer where our operator's presence is needed, but uh, we wanted to avoid travel. Now, the fact is that you cannot do travel. It's, it's not a choice. It's a compulsion to avoid travel. But even back then, we were thinking of a way to uh, help uh, rectify problems on machines or carry on retrofits and we we introduced or, or we introduced after the lockdown we introduced uh, augmented reality wherein the user or the maintenance engineer of the customer would wear these smart wearables and the engineer sitting here in sp would be able to see exactly what he's seeing and see what he's doing and guide him step by step as to what procedure he should be following so uh, the, the, the problems in machines are at this level, when you're talking about a good manufacturer, we leave aside the mechanicals. We assume that mechanicals are going to be fine, but uh, the problems are more in the field of automation. And again, automation, we have software and hardware. So software is taken care of by having modem support. So you can make changes in the program, update, upgrade, uh, sitting here. But uh, again, when it comes to hardware replacement, that's where the smart wearables come in. So we address that part as well. And we have carried out a couple of uh, such uh, interventions, not only in India, but also in uh, the UAE. And uh, it, it was really smooth. Excellent. So you, you, would, or you were already ahead of the curve. Yes. Um, Biku, how do you see the Indian flexible uh, market going forward? Uh, has the sentiment come back? Because you would know from the orders that you're getting in your order book status. Well, I'd like to uh, say here that the sentiment never went away. It was only a compulsion wherein you could not operate your plant for that uh, month and a half or two months, which, uh, which put the brakes on. But the sentiment was always there. And as soon as we were able to start in a limited uh, fashion, albeit, uh, everyone went top gear. And uh, 
started uh, you know getting their machines up and running ordering new machines everything and the sentiment now continues to be uh, very bullish and uh, i see this trend to continue certainly for the next 2 or 3 years because the most conservative of customers have ordered machines with us in the past 6 months that is such music to the ears and we are so proud of our flexible packaging industry that they even in yeah. crises yeah. like that you know they have com- completely shown their uh, uh, inner strength and implemented their plans without uh, yeah. any hassle yes excellent it's about being in the right place at the right time i guess we we were in the right industry uh yeah we were lucky i'm so proud to be a part of this industry uh, biku what is the plans for the future any new sitters that you are uh, planning to launch any new mergers acquisitions any new plants what are your plans uh, i'll approach your question backwards when you talk about mergers acquisitions or uh, extending your product line strict no because uh, our our move back in 2005 has um, I strengthened our belief that it's all about focus do not dilute it do what you do best do more of it is what we are going to be doing yes uh, you're talking about new machines uh, we we have recently launched uh, a new machine where we have automated the entire setup process because we talk about speed we talk about rewind changeovers we talk about productivity but we ignore the user friendliness quotient of a machine which is really important today the kind of operators that we have today and the kind of operators we are expecting to get down the line we need machines which can set themselves up so to say so like on a printing machine you have to uh, you have to set the register color by color one color two color three color similarly on a slitter what you have to do is you have to align three parts you have to align the line guide you have to which is the input of the machine you have to align the process which is the cutting section and you have to align the rewind which is the output input process and output you have an unwind you have a cutting section and a rewind and setting up a job is about aligning these three sections so that you can start you in fact you can do the alignment based on the inputs which the machine has already got in the form of the recipe of the job those inputs are used in order to do all these positioning even before you have loaded the job onto the machine so that when you switch on the machine you get your job in register so to say within a few meters of starting the job which if you ask an expert in the field is just going to say wow so uh, this is what we have done and uh, our machine uh, is to be dispatched very soon to our uh, reputed customer this machine all the converters will be watch- watching this show they'll be very happy to hear about this uh, new machine that you're going to be launching it's, it's a 1000 meters per minute machine again 1000 meters per minute the speed so it doesn't let you down in terms of productivity as well wonderful that's a huge uh, uh, waiting for the industry um bipu what has been your learning in this pandemic you know i know you're a very thinking kind of a person uh what has been your uh, takeaway which you know you would like to share with our uh, viewers uh this is not only for us but also for our customers and everyone because i've been speaking to a lot of customers during the pandemic there was not much more to do so uh, the feedback i got from a few customers very reputed custom uh, companies was that the pandemic pandemic was an eye opener because they were compelled to work with a very limited workforce and maintain the output levels or at least try to try to maintain as far as possible so they realized that there were quite a few resources human resources i would say who were uh, who were really not contributing earlier and after having them out of the way the next in line or the the alternates were able to keep up the productivity level yeah. so this is one area where we need to really think deeply as to how efficient we are we should be having good quality in our workforce not quantity train our people well make them more efficient make them more deserving of higher remuneration keep them happy and grow your company excellent excellent these are takeaways for myself also and what you said earlier in the session was that do more of what you do best exactly that is a wonderful line and it will add on to our mission statement at least um biko we are so thankful for this session and uh, i'm sure that uh, ravi kohli ji your uh, father will be so proud of you uh, you're absolutely creating a niche for yourself and we are proud of the indian manufacturing ma- uh, companies who are 
taking the flag of uh, India higher, not only in terms of quality, but also taking the market share, taking the Atmanirbharta still a step forward, having the best technology of the world and still taking the Indian market share forward, actually becoming the porous of India, as I would say. We are going to thank you so much for this session and we look forward to have you in our flexible uh, packaging summit, which we are planning for February. Hopefully everything should be okay by then. We thank you and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Nidhi. Thank Absolutely. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.